guys, it's Laura and you're watching Laura X Annie. So today I am here with my Romeo and Juliet video. First time filming it here at uni. So this is Act 4, Scenes 1 and 2. Last month we got through the whole of Act 3. So this is Act 4, Scenes 1 and 2. So let's get into Scene 1. So in Scene 1, it starts in his cell. Friar Lawrence speaks with Paris about his impending marriage to Juliet. Paris says, that Juliet's grief about Tybalt's death has made her unbalanced and that Capulet in his wisdom has determined they should marry soon so that Juliet can stop crying and put an end to her period of mourning. Friar Lawrence says to himself that he wishes he knew a reason that Juliet's wedding to Paris could be dis delayed or at least postponed um, to give Juliet time probably to get to Mancha. So when Juliet enters, this is where she wields a knife and asks Friar Lawrence for help as she wishes to kill herself. Friar Lawrence then comes up with the sleeping potion idea um, where she will be laid to rest in the Capulet tomb and Friar Lawrence will send word to Romeo and Mantua and they'll be free to live away from their parents' hatred. Then on to scene two, this is where Juliet returns home where she finds Capulet and Lady Capulet preparing for the wedding she surprises her parents by repenting her disobedience and cheerfully agreeing to marry Paris. Capulet is so pleased that he insists on moving the marriage up a day to Wednesday, which is tomorrow. Juliet heads to her chambers to prepare for her wedding and then Capulet heads off to tell Paris the news. So in conclusion, Friar Lawrence is the wiliest and most scheming character in Romeo and Juliet. He secretly marries the two lovers, spirits Romeo to Mantua and stages Juliet's death. The Friar's machinations seem also to be tools of fate, which is a huge big thing, we've talked about that. How many times have we talked about fate? Just know that Romeo and Juliet is about fate. Um, yet Despite the role Friar Lawrence plays in bringing about the lover's death, which he totally does not mean to do, Shakespeare never presents him in a negative or even ambiguous light. He's always treated as a benign, wise presence. The tragic failure of his plans is treated as a disastrous accident for which Friar Lawrence bears no responsibility, which he doesn't. He doesn't. It's, it's about miscommunication and about timing, because think about how the wedding, now if the wedding had taken place when it was supposed to, this wouldn't have happened. The letter would have been delivered to Mantua in time and, you know, Juliet would have been able to run away with um, Romeo, but it's not called a tragedy for nothing. In contrast, it is a challenge to uh, situate Paris along the play's moral continuum. He is not exactly an adversary to Romeo and Juliet since he never acts consciously to harm them or go against their wishes. Like almost everyone else, he knows nothing of their relationship. Paris' feelings for Juliet are also um, a subject of some ambiguity since the audience is never allowed access to his thoughts, unlike we're allowed access to Juliet's thoughts and Romeo's thoughts and even sometimes Fire Lawrence's thoughts. Um, later, textual evidence does indicate that Paris harbours a legitimate love for Juliet, which makes you kind of root for Juliet in Paris because you're like, well, he had a legitimate love for her. Um, and though he arrogantly assumes Juliet will want to marry him, Paris never treats her unkindly. Nevertheless, because she does not love him, he represents a real and frightening potentiality for Juliet. And that's it. Really quick, but that is Romeo and Juliet, Act 4, Scenes 1 and 2. Next week we are covering, um, well, next, not next week, but next month we're covering, I think, the rest, Scenes 3 to 5 of Romeo and Juliet, which also means that we get to cover the soliloquy, which is my favourite one. It's the For Well God Knows When We Should Meet Again soliloquy from Romeo and Juliet, which I have very high knowledge of. Um, but join me on Thursday where we are going to do another first for me in this flat, Mary and John's character arc. <laughs> very excited. And then like, I think the week after it's like loads of other videos. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy it and I will see you on Thursday. Bye.